Hello, Grey Tales. In the previous video, we discussed what matter was and the properties of matter. In today's video, we're going to look at breaking up matter into pure substances and mixtures, so classifying matter. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet so you don't miss any of these videos in the future. Matter, as I've mentioned, can be broken down into either pure substance or mixture. I'm going to go through examples and how to classify and how we know. I want you guys to for a second think about the air around us. This is obviously a picture of the sky and clouds, but I mean, we can't see the air. But think about this, the air around us. Do you guys think it is a pure substance or a mixture? You may not know the difference between the, be, between the two now, so your, your um, choice may not be informed. But just what would you pick? Pure substance or mixture? Tell me. Well, guys, the air around us is a mixture. It's a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. It's not a pure substance. Mixtures consist of pure substances. So the air around us is a mixture, and it's a mixture of different gases. Those gases are pure substances, like carbon dioxide, for example. That's a pure substance. What about table salts? So think carefully about table salts. You may have to think about whether I can give table salt a formula, a chemical formula. What do we think? Table salt is actually NaCl. So I don't know if you learned this at any point, but Na sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, NaCl is table salt. This is a compound consisting of sodium ions and chloride ions in a lattice. We'll get to that in another video. But what I mean by that is this is a pure substance. It's a compound. So matter can be broken up into pure substances and mixtures. When I speak about pure substances, I'm speaking about elements. And these ones I can find on the periodic table, periodic table of elements. Compounds are made when elements combine together in a fixed ratio, like carbon dioxide, like water. That's pure substances. Mixtures, on the other hand, are when I take multiple pure substances, combine them to form a mixture. So I can get a homo homogeneous or homogeneous mixture, doesn't matter how you say it, and a heterogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. This little mind map over here is basically just an expansion on the previous one I showed you. And all I've added in this mind map are the definitions. So how can I define a pure substance or a mixture? So a pure substance essentially is something that cannot be separated into simpler components by physical methods. So just to let you know what that means, for example, if I take H2O, H2O is a pure substance. It is in fact a compound which consists of two elements in a fixed ratio, hydrogen to oxygen in a ratio of two to one. So H2O or water is a compound, right? Now, can I take H2O and separate it into simpler components? So in other words, can I take H2O and break it up into H and O by using a physical method? So by physical method, I mean hand sorting, evaporation, filtration, distillation, things like that. You cannot. You can filter water all you want. You will not break it up into its elements. This makes substances, well, pure substances, what they are. So we've got elements. Elements can be found on the periodic table of elements, as you can see over here, and they consist only of one type of atom. So sodium consists of sodium atoms. Copper consists of copper atoms. Then we get compounds. Compounds are also pure substances, but they consist of two or more different elements combined in a fixed ratio. So this over here is hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. We discussed that already. That's water. And that consists of two elements combined in the ratio of two to one. Hydrogen to oxygen, two to one. Carbon dioxide, for example, is carbon to oxygen in a ratio of one to two right that's a compound here's another table to help you understand what an element is in a compound so elements consist of atoms the atoms are the smallest particles that gives that element its chemical property each element has unique properties 
You cannot separate an element using physical methods. You cannot. Compounds, same. You can't separate it using physical methods, but you can separate compounds using chemical methods. Okay. Compounds or molecules, we kind of group them together. Molecules we can consider as N2 or O2. Do you guys see that it consists of one type of element? So nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, chlorine gas. It's N2, so two nitrogens bonded together. Two oxygens, so same element but bonded together. Compounds are generally when we have two or more different elements. So here we go. These are atoms. These are elements, helium atoms, oxygen molecules. We call oxygen, that is O2. That is a diatomic element. Okay. And compounds, when we have two or more different types of elements combining together. So remember, we said I can take a compound like this. This is water. And I cannot separate it using physical methods. But... I can separate it using chemical methods. Here's an example of a chemical method. It's called electrolysis. We'll get into this in more detail in another video. And you do this in detail in grade 12. But essentially, you attach it to a battery and that passes electricity through the solution called the electrolyte. It causes these rods to be oppositely charged and that causes different different ions of different charges to be attracted to the different rods. It separates the, co the compounds. Okay, mixtures. Mixtures are different to pure substances. So mixtures are when I take two or more pure substances and I combine it together. So think back to the beginning of the video when I said the air around us. Air is a mixture because I take pure substances of gases and I mix them together. So I take a bunch of gases, those are pure substances, I mix them together and I get air. Air is a mixture of, for example, carbon dioxide gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, all mixed together to form air. Now think about this, just based on the words itself. Do you think air is a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture? If the word homo, hetero doesn't mean anything to you, think of homo, homogeneous, as being one single constant composition. So it's the same throughout. You can't tell the difference between the parts. Hetero means many or multiple. So a heterogeneous mixture means you can see it's not uniform composition. You can see the difference. So air is actually homogeneous. Awesome. Now mixtures, guys. Mixtures I can separate using physical methods. Now I want you to think about this. Can you name a mixture that I can separate using evaporation? So evaporation, I have a a jar or a bowl or a, you know a hollow bowl with a solution and I want to separate it using evaporation so one of the substances will be evaporated it'll basically go from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase and it'll leave the other substance behind separating that mixture think about anything does anything come to mind well salt water so table salt sodium chloride mixed with water H2O gives me a mixture of salt water I can put that out in the sun. It'll take a while, but I can put it out in the sun. And evaporation will eventually, if the temperature and the heat is correct and all those things, I can separate the water from the salt. Salt water is a mixture. So I can separate it using physical methods, like evaporation, like filtration, like magnetism, like hand sorting. Physical physical methods we'll go through those but basically when i do when i have a mixture a new compound is not made a new compound is not made if i add salt water salt to water sorry salt to water i get salt water did i make a new chemical compound nope i just have a mixture so here we go homogeneous or homogeneous is a mixture of uniform composition you can't tell the difference between the components Here's air. So I put this picture here because this is air. If you look at the air around you, you can't see it, but air around you. Can you see the nitrogen gas and the oxygen gas? No, you cannot. It's uniform composition. Same thing if I dissolve sugar in warm water so that it dissolves, I create a solution. I can't tell the difference between the sugar and the water. Okay, so solutions 
are all examples of homogeneous or homogeneous mixtures. I cannot visually distinguish the components. Heterogeneous or heterogeneous, on the other hand, is when I can easily identify the components. So on the left, we have oil and water. You can tell the difference. These are immiscible. In other words, they do not mix. They don't mix. You can tell the difference between the oil and the water, or the salad dressing and the oil, or whatever it is. This is salad. This is a fruit salad. You can tell the difference between the strawberries, there's some lychee, there's some grapes. You can tell the difference. All right. So, heterogeneous or heterogeneous. The composition is not uniform. So, I was discussing this with my grade tense. Mud is an example of heterogeneous. You can tell the difference between the sand grains and the water forming mud. You can. Look at that picture over there. There are normally more than two phases present. So sand is solid, water is liquid. Normally more than two phases present. In this example, we have oil and water. This forms an emulsion. So the liquid with a with the, the different density separate out the liquid. The lower density liquid sits on top. If you shake it, it'll form little oil bubbles. They do not dissolve in one another. So to end the video off, here are a few examples of homogeneous or homogeneous and heterogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures. So I would take these down if I were you and in the exam you need to be able to identify the differences here. Now just before I leave you with an activity which I'll do in the next video I just want to mention that soda water, soda water, so water with the bubbles, that's heterogeneous because we can see the gas bubbles and the water. Remember, we said generally more than two phases are present. Now, to leave you, here's a table. I will go over the answers to this table in the next video.